here's five things to think about uh, when you're going to buy your garden seeds. Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Jason. Art of Christian Homestead here, okay? Um, it's after Christmas, we're heading towards New Year's, and it's getting time to start thinking about garden seeds. I mean, depends on where you're at here in Southwest Ohio. Um, we're not really getting our, our warm weather stuff in until, you know, May, but we, uh, we, we can sow some things, uh, cool weather crops, maybe get them in in late March or April, depending on what the weather's like and what our situation is, but we got to get our seeds. First of all, you know, there's always there's high demand all the time anymore. Um, and second of all, we got to start seeds in like February, in March, and we'll make sure we get the seeds we want, right? So it's time to start thinking about these things. Here's five things to think about uh, when you're going to buy your garden seeds. Number one is buy what you're going to eat, <laughs> right? I mean, look at look at what you're what you've been eating, what you normally eat, the things you like to eat. And buy those things. Uh, this, sometimes, you know, Angela and I have got caught up in something you know, that we've never seen before. The seed catalogs or the description on the internet romanticizes it in a way. It makes it sound so amazing. And you buy it, and you're thinking, well, eh, wish I just kind of stuck to the, the normal stuff. Uh, sometimes we've done that with a tomato. We've done that with greens. Uh, we've done that with a... With, all kinds of stuff honestly but uh peppers especially too man uh but buy what you're gonna eat you can't keep it simple um yes certain kind of uh, tomatoes squashes peppers they're gonna sell them that's their job right it's, it's the seed company's job to sell you on this seed uh it's your job to be smart about what you're buying <clears throat> so think about those things eat buy what you're gonna eat buy what you normally eat um, you can experiment on some things. Uh, like last year, we, we planted two types of beets. Okay, a Detroit dark red and a and the albino beet, the white beet. We've never had white beets. We kind of wanted to experiment, see what they're like. We grew them. They grew well. We haven't tasted them yet. Uh, we pickled them like we do our normal beets. But at the end of the day, eh, wish I just stuck to Detroit dark red, just because it's simple. We know we like Detroit dark red beets. They grow well. They handle the, the environment well. They can handle the heat well. So we kind of wish we just kind of stuck to one variety of beet. <laughs> and sometimes, honestly, it's also more financially efficient to make sure that you're growing things that you know you're gonna like. If you wanna experiment with seeds, maybe experiment with maybe 25% or less of what you're doing. And that way you're using your ground more efficiently, you're using your money more efficiently, and it's, your time's more efficient, and, and you're going to be more sustainable because you're growing things that you're going to consume rather than growing things that you just don't like. So that's the first thing. Another thing would be to buy from reputable, reputable companies. Uh, there's several great seed companies out there, okay? But there's also some seed traps <laughs> is what I would call them. Um, I'm, I'm not going to call it any names of who we didn't like or whatever. Um, but I do remember one year we bought a chocolate striped tomato. Okay. And one year we had chocolate striped tomatoes and, we, and I loved them. I thought, man, it's the best old fashioned, you know, tomato flavor I've had in any tomato so far. So the next year we bought chocolate striped tomato seeds thinking, oh man, I want some more of those. And the place we bought them from then wasn't really a chocolate striped tomato. It was some weird cross pollinated mess that didn't grow well, didn't taste well. And it was a waste of our time, energy, space, everything, money, everything. So be careful about where you buy from. You ain't gotta be timid about everybody, obviously, but because there's a lot of great places to buy seeds from. And especially nowadays, there's more and more people selling seeds. More and more people are paying attention to what they're doing with the seeds. And that's fine, that's good. But if you're leery about somebody, do your, do your due diligence and you know, do some research on it. Make sure that you're going to buy from somebody that is going to give you the right thing. And that way you're not wasting your time and money. The third thing is honestly something we've learned over time and from having rough experiences is maybe buy a little bit extra. Um, like, for instance, we grow pink eye purple holes. 
um, pink eye purple hole peas, okay? Uh, they're a cow pea that, that's like a black eyed pea, right? But they're different. You can't find them anywhere else. They're better. We adore them. I absolutely love them. But we plant them in our garden down here. So you still have some of these things we haven't taken down yet. We plant them in this ground right here. And it seems like every year these little stupid roly poly pill bug looking things eat the seeds. <laughs> it's the section, this section of ground is, is a little cooler, damper, just from where it's at on the ground or in our, in our yards where the ground is. And so it doesn't get warm as quickly. It doesn't get, it doesn't dry out as quickly. And the ground just kind of is a breeding zone for those bugs. And they eat those seeds every time. Uh, we don't buy treated seeds of any kind. At least we try not to. We have before, but we don't like to. Um, and those just, they get ate. Something happens and they eat those, those bugs eat those seeds every year. So we always need more than what we, than what we'd like to get is because something happens to them. Things can happen to your beans. Let's just say you plant a bunch of beans and that happens or a groundhog comes and mows them all down or a rabbit eats them all. You know, a squirrel digs up your uh, radish seeds and whatever. Things happen. But because of that, you'd rather have more seeds right then, right? So if you think you're only gonna need bean seeds for a 20 foot row, and you think, okay, well that means seeds, I only need this size of pack. Maybe buy an extra pack maybe buy a little larger size pack, something of that nature. That way, if something does happen, then you've got a backup plan, right? And then if you don't use those seeds and you can give them to somebody, you can sell them to somebody, hold on to them for next year, and that way you've got, you can still use those seeds, it's okay. You know, but it's nice to have a backup plan in case something happens. Another thing would be to, maybe if you're gonna plant seeds, like, okay, okay well, we're gonna plant, we're gonna plant um, food all year long. We're gonna start planting in like March, or April, and we're gonna keep planting into like October sometimes. Depends on wh what happens, but we're gonna grow food all year long because we wanna have greens growing into the fall that we can overwinter and they'll keep growing back in the spring. So we're gonna have seeds planting, ripping out, planting, ripping out, you know? And so we need to have all of our seeds on hand like right away so that we just have our have our stuff at a ready disposal but like i so said if you think you're going to want to plant a fall garden maybe go ahead and buy your seeds now uh, don't wait until july it's gonna be hard to find what you're looking for in july buy your stuff now don't wait around don't wait too long buy your stuff now it's just just better that way you, you've got what you need you've, you know you've got what you need think about it plan it out okay plan your garden now Think about what you're doing now, okay? If you do that, if you're thinking now and planning for it now, then you can buy your seeds appropriately now, <laughs> right? You don't, you're not getting caught your pants down later. You know, you don't want to be unprepared for what you're doing. So that's, that's just a bonus. And I would say one, one other thing, honestly, is buy things you're comfortable growing. Uh, you know, like don't, if you live in a, in a cool climate, okay, if you live in a cool climate, don't set yourself up for failure. Don't try to, you know, plant something that's gonna take five months to grow if you have a four month growing season, which there, sadly there are places in America with a four month growing season. Um, but also, if you live in the south, deep south, don't plant lettuce and spinach at a time where it's gonna be too hot for it. Those things need cooler weather. Don't, so don't set yourself up for failure. You know, buy seeds that you can that are climate appropriate, that are gar that are growing zone appropriate. Understand, you know, do your research. Know where you're at. Know what your growing zone is. Know when to plant these seeds. If you're going and buying seeds that you're that you're going to plan on planting lettuce in June, and you live even in the middle of the country, that's too late. You might go plant lettuce in June in the north northern tier of the country, but not not most places. It's just too late and you're gonna wind up growing lettuce that bolts, goes a seed, and it's bitter. That and spinach is the same way. Spinach is probably worse. Spinach is worse than that. So I mean uh, buy seeds that are climate appropriate. That's another big thing there. So think about your space, understand what you're getting into, 
a little bit and don't set yourself up for failure and get your seeds while you can all right hey thank you guys for watching my name is jason this is art of christian homestead i love you guys god bless you goodbye